I just want to start with a, a story. A story in the sense, uh, a few children were playing Noah's Ark. They were playing in the bathroom, in the bathtub. They filled the water. It's a flood for them. They opened the shower and the water, full, full of water in the bathtub. And they have their own toys, their animals, and they made a, 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 a big boat. And they were playing in, uh, the, in the bathroom. And after a few hours, uh, they got bored and they said that we will finish the playing. And they released the water and the flood is over. And somebody from, the, from their side, they said that, why can't we offer a sacrifice for the Lord? Because we are saved, you know. And they considering a, they considered a sacrifice for the Lord. And they went out, to the, went out of the house and they made all the arrangements for the sacrifice. And they sent one guy to, buy, to, to bring an animal for the sacrifice. And this guy went into the room and opened the box, trying, trying to find out an animal for the sacrifice. And he saw several animals in his box, very beautiful, good, new ones, which he was not convinced enough to give it to the Lord. At last, he found out an animal, a cow with two legs and no tail, an old one, and he took and he, they, he bought it outside and they put it in the fire and submitted before the Lord in their own way as a sacrifice before the Lord. I know that this is a silly story, but God has taught me a good lesson out of this story. And I want to encourage the church today from a very, very familiar Old Testament story with a title, Giving God the Best, or walking back to Moriah. I know that you have, by, by this time, you know what I'm going to preach. Children, you also listen. This is a beautiful story like uh, the story of Moses as you enacted a study. And I take the church, the attention of the church to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. The human tendency is to keep the best for ourselves. And we are not comfortable enough when somebody asks the best from us. Look, the best thing which we love, we don't like to give up or we, won't, we don't like to give away. And contradicting to this human tendency, we see a beautiful picture of sacrifice in Genesis chapter 22. I have 30 minutes. What I'm going to do is the first 15 minutes we will be reading this story and trying to figure out some spiritual lessons that will be very important, very foundational to our lives. And next 15 minutes, I want to give you three practical applications which we can take home and meditate. Would you please join me? You can see in the head notes, uh, Genesis chapter 22. I want your undivided attention, including children. Would you please uh, be with me? Give your ears to me. Sometimes later, God tested, tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, that means in chapter 21, we see a lot of incidents, 20 and 21. After so many incidents in life in 21, the birth of Isaac, the sending away of Ishmael, and the treaty with Abimelech, there was a time of calmness. And Abraham was enjoying the life in the midst of calmness and unbelievable trial came in the life of Abraham. It's, love, it's like this many things that happens in our life. When life goes so smooth, when everything is perfect, when everything is okay, there will be some incidents in our life which will really shake our lives. In the same way we see in the life of Abraham everything was smooth. He asked God for several things including for his son and God gave him a son. And he was successful and victorious in several aspects. The calm, in the calmness of life, we see an unbelievable trial in the life of Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac. You see the specific command of God. God demands something very specific, leaving no confusion and giving no opportunity, no options for Abraham. He says, you know, if God would have asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, 
definitely God would have chosen not Isaac, but Ishmael. But very clearly God said, your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, take him and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain, I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God has told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there we will worship and then we will come back to you. See his confidence? We will go, we will worship and we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. And the two of them went on together. Then Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here. Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Probably this is, this is, this is one of the painful questions Abraham had faced in his life. Sometimes we too carry burdens which we cannot reveal to people. He clearly knows that he's going to, going to, uh, going with uh, Isaac to sacrifice Isaac. And he cannot reveal it now. He has a confidence in his mind. But he, what, you see his answer in verse 8. Abraham answered. Abraham's reply has become the synonym of the man of faith. That's the reason why we call him in this 21st century as a man of faith. Speaking faith into what a humanly hopeless situation. Blurred, blurred. Abraham the audacity of a person like Abraham to say that God will provide. He don't know where, what is going to happen next. In the next hour, after a Sandar Fatil, he has the guts and audacity to say that I have a I have I have my God in heaven who will provide Jehovah Jireh. An answer which would display the complete trust of Abraham in the living God, Je Jehovah. Let me pause for a minute and tell you, God is asking the church to come to that level of faith. When we see nothing, when we see the door closed, when we see the Red Sea, when we see the Jordan, when we find no hope, when we find no doors open before us, can you being a Pentecostal who trust in the Lord, can you and I say that God will provide? That makes us different from others. We have a Lord in heaven who will provide. Yesterday somebody asked me, Ebi, where are you having your food? Look, are you okay? I said, my food is online. www.eliavindakaka.com <laughs> Look, I simply said that. But you look, every moment for every reason, small and big, church, we have to depend on God. And we have to rely on God's promise that Jehovah Jireh, God will provide for us. How God had miraculously met our spiritual need, we have to be grateful to God. When we, and I, and I, I read this passage, I cried before God. I said, God, how many times, how many times I didn't know from where the help comes from. But one assurance was there. God who gave me the promise will definitely guide you in the midst of all the hopelessness and hopeless situations. And I know that in the church there are people, those who are literally struggling 
to upgrade themselves to this school of faith. Seeing nothing before you, but let me encourage you to trust in the Lord and believe that God will open his ways. Open his ways in his own time. How many times you have said, God, God, I don't see a way forward. I don't know what will happen tomorrow. I don't know when this will happen. For the last 8 years, 10 years, 20 years I'm praying. But I don't see even a sign that is going to happen in my life. But today, let me encourage the church. Would you please consider Abraham's life as your own lives. And tell God, God I know I'm going to Mount Moria. I know that God will provide. And that should be a, a, a powerful sign and testimony before God. And let us say that, Jehovah Jireh. Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamp for the burnt offering, my son. And two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar. On the top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand. And took the knife. To slay his son. But the angel of the Lord. Called out to him. From the heaven. Abraham. Abraham. Here I am. Abraham replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy. He said. You see the timing. He was ready. To slay his own son. At that point, you, he, 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 he heard a voice from heaven. Many a times, the long-weighted answers for your problems come at the verge of a disaster. You may think that life is going to finish. This is dead end. I don't see a way. In that point, Sometimes we may be, we, we, we are ready to quit at that point. And that's the time when God gives a twist in your lives. How many of you have experienced the twist of God in our lives? The point where we say, I am, it's done. Not even for a minute. It's a complete disaster. I'm a failure. I know that may not be many but at least a few had even decided to take away life. But at that point, you have heard a voice from the heaven. Abraham, Abraham, do not do any harm to the child. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God. Because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Let me read it in this way. I would like to read it as, you have not withheld from me the best. Abraham looked up. And there in Ethicus he saw a ram. And we see in 40, verse 14. So Abraham called the place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. On the mountain where you didn't withheld your best, God will provide. On a mountain where you are able to sacrifice your best, you will hear the voice of God. On the mountain where you are ready to give your topmost priority to God, you will hear the voice of God. So don't withheld the best. That's a point where you hear voice from heaven. And that will become a history till today. The place is known as on the mountain God will provide. That should be our testimony. When we go to church, when we go to different places, there should be something within us that will come out of our mouth testifying God. The provision of God and the providence of God. If we want to testify God, we must be able to Give our best to Jesus. Best to God. 
And verse 15 onwards we see the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven second time and said, I swear by my, my, myself, declares the Lord, and because you have done this and have not withheld your best, the son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the sea seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities and their enemies. And through your offspring, all the nations on the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Every act I did, genuine sacrifice brings God, God's blessing. Look, every act we do, if it is a genuine sacrifice, that will bring God's blessing. This is a story. This is a Sunday school story. Let me give you three applications. Number one. Abraham showed unadulterated love to God. You cannot give your best unless you have an intense love with somebody. Love provokes us to give the best. Our showing, our, 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 our giving shows how best we love the Lord. Today, this morning, Pastor Sunny George was taking the Sunday school, the adult class. He said how Paul received gifts from the church at Philippi because of the love and concern towards the work of the Lord and for the people of the God, people of God. Isaiah 41, 8 and James 2, 23 says, Abraham was a friend of God. And I was reading one book, Watchman Sneeze's book. And in that book he says, sometimes we are like children when we come to the presence of God. We ask God so many gifts. And like a father, God always gives us gifts. He gives us house, children, health, wealth, work, money, everything. And now our hands are full. And that's the point where God asks, would you please stretch out your hands? I want to have communion with you, fellowship with you. And we are not in a position to stretch out your hands because our hands are full. And God sometimes asks, shake it off. Shake it off. Can you do that? Do you consider your blessing, the blessings which I have given you as priority or you consider the fellowship with me as your priority? Many a times we don't shake it off. We say that God, how can I come? That's, what, that's the reason why pastor said, how can I come to the, to the Sunday service? How can I manage it? Like, how, can I, how, can, like, how can I come when I have other, other businesses? Like, what is your priority? Sometimes God asks you to shake it off. When God asks you to have communion with him, to stretch out your hands, are you in a position to stretch out your hands to God? Never ever stick on to the blessings which you have received. That is what Watchman Nee says. Nothing should hinder us going to the Lord and you have communion with God. The unadulterated love, the intense love. I have nothing other than God. Everything is my second, the, the priority list. Everything comes after God, not before God. That's the reason why Abraham was able to give his own son to God. You imagine his own son. After so many years of praying, he got this only son and the willingness to give him back. What's the reason? He was not a fool. He was a mighty man. He was a strong personality. But the willingness to give back to God is because of his intense love towards God. Church, this is a very big question mark before us. Why do we come to the church? We say we are Christians, we are Pentecostals, we are churchgoers. But what is the reason? If God asks you to shake it off, some of the blessings for the sake of God, are we willing to do that? Or are we clinging on to the blessings that we have received from the Lord? Instead of stretching out to God when he asks us his, our fellowship. Think about what holds us back. Approaching, running to God. Or what restricts us reaching out to God. Even if it's a blessing that we receive from the Lord. I think sometimes we have to walk back to Moriah. 
surrender before God and say that. Prove that. God, Isaac is not my priority. You are my priority. I'm not a follower of a film industry or film actors. But last week I was reading a, an interview with a film actress back in Kerala. And the interviewer asked this film actress, after the marriage, you didn't act in any films. What's the reason? And this lady, a famous lady in Kerala film industry, she said, I love my husband more than the profession. She would have scaled heights in the industry, but she decided to keep her husband as priority number one than the profession. I'm not talking about husband-wife relationship or profession. The commitment and the priority given to one purpose. Church, we must learn how to keep God above everything. Blessings will come and go. That may be material blessing, social or emotional, or any the physical blessing, everything. But above everything, would you be able to consider God in your priority list? That is number one. Number two, for Abraham, it was an unshakable faith. At least in two occasions, we can see the word of faith of Abraham. He said to his servant, we will come back. We are going to worship God and we will come back. Number two, to Isaac, he said, God will provide. Actually, when God says something, we don't need to worry about the how. If God asks you to do something, he knows how it should happen. Trust in the, in the midst of hopelessness. Look, how much we are trained in that way, when we, when we see a hopeless situation, are we confused and perplexed, depressed, or being a child of God, are we able to exercise faith and say that I know this is an issue. I know this is a valley of the shadow of death. But I know God's presence is with me. An unshakable faith. I think everybody in the church should take a higher degree in the school of faith. You know, we take higher degrees in education. No? In, the, in the church, I think we have to go step by step. We have to walk forward and get into get, and, and receive higher degrees when we walk with the Lord in faith. Unbelievable things. I don't want to explain because I don't have, I don't have time. You see what happens in Moria. I see what happens on top of the mountain. Miraculously how God twisted the life of Abraham and Isaac. And that is how God deals with people. Those who have unshakable faith. And number three. Unconditional obedience. God said to Abraham to sacrifice his one only son. Do you think that Abraham was a foolish guy? Abraham knew very well to argue and bargain. We see in the case of Sodom and Gomorrah, God said that the number 50 people, if there, were 50, there are 50 people who obey my commandment, I will not destroy. You see how Abraham brought it down to five? He bargained with God. He argued with God. 50, 45, 40, 30, 10. And he was smart enough to argue. He was smart enough to bargain. But when, he, when it comes to a command from the Lord, unconditional obedience. Unconditional. No condition. He didn't say anything at all. He didn't even bother to say that God can I try Ismail instead of Isaac he didn't say that he didn't ask God why I think the intense love and surrender should lead us to unconditional obedience love faith and surrender that will lead us to unconditional obedience we must understand that God works in our obedience. I have heard hundreds of testimonies. Those who have left their home from northern parts of India came to seminary for theological training. Like every year, in the first three months, we have testimonies. 
there are people those who have come to the seminary with just one bag and a one pair of shirt clothing and now they are miraculously used in different different capacities in the field helping people to understand the love of Christ I know that if we give time to testify there will be lots of stories even within this church how unconditional obedience have bought God's blessings and God's directions we need to obey God we should not withhold the best but we must be able to give the best to the Lord one of the beautiful songs which I like the most is take my voice and let me sing always for my king take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee take my silver and my gold not a might would I withhold take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose as God laid Abraham to Moriah let us pray that God may keep us taking to Moriah again and again a place where we offer the best our best dreams our best desires our best plans our best hopes the things we own our dearest ones understand that the Mount of Moria is not only a mountain of sacrifice but a mountain of provision also when I say you go back to Moria it's not only to sacrifice but there you see the miracle of God the provision of God the providence of God and today the call for the church is to bring our dearest and bus to the altar and leave it all to Jesus hand and receive his provisions what is your Isaac have you ever thought take a minute to think about your Isaac who is our Isaac I don't know you had to decide for me I had to decide the best thing we have to take it to the Mount of Moria and sacrifice it there unadulterated love unshakable faith and unconditional obedience Nirmalamaya Sneha Thakar Khano Kata Vishwasam Uru Kariyam Angotu Paraya The unconditional Aita All our obedience God is Asking us to surrender before God Uru Nimshan Ningla Noda Pan Kandagala Yama Na Yama I know that this is the simplest message which I preached in IPC Orlando Church this is a God-given message to the church. God is asking not to bring the secondary things before God. Church, fellowship, communion, spirituality. These should not be secondary. These should be primary when we come to the presence of God. You told us, Neha till Porogo to Poingle. Everybody would even know to very well. They were in the Hidatin Vindy on the Prati Yamo. Vishwasa till Porogo to Poingle. Can you ask God? You told Jodi Yamo, they may. Would you please help me to come close to you in faith? Obedience. God has said so many times to do this, to do that, to move this direction, to say this. But we were looking at our convenience. We were looking at our comfort zones. And we failed to respond to God. I want to pray for you before I close. If God has spoken to you, and if God has asked you to take a step in life, I don't mention the Gemba. Abraham in Apollo. If God has spoken to you, in terms of intense love towards God, in terms of unshakable faith towards God, 
in terms of unconditional obedience towards God. Only those who are touched by God this morning. I want you to raise your hand. Every eye is closed. This is a time that we min that we are ministered by the Holy Spirit. If God has touched you and provoked your heart to take a decision, there's a beautiful song. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. Uh, how I have proved him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. God is asking you to come forward to trust him more. If God has, is asking you to shake something off from your hand, probably those things also might have received from the Lord. But sometimes God will say, shake it off. Take it away. Remove it. Leave it. Shun away. If you respond with an unconditional obedience, there is a blessing. You will not lose anything. But you will get the name. Friend of God.